So this is uh, definitely a first to do a silent uh, speech and moderation. I hope you can hear us, not if you can. Perfect. So this next debate is on the value or waste of board of directors in early stage startup. My name is Nana Bule. I'm uh, the CEO of Microsoft in Denmark and also engaged in the startup community as a chairman of a board, uh, among other things. How many of you in the audience are founders or running a startup? A third? How many investors? Yes, and the rest of you are just here for the coffee and the cool headsets. Perfect. So before I introduce my fabulous panel behind me, I'll just move out so you can see everyone. A few notes. So the discussion here is about boards in early stage startup. And early stage here defined as the very few first years, uh, pre-seed, seed funding, uh, driven by founders, there's a minimum viable product, maybe the first employees have joined the company. Often the teams are very small. Uh, sometimes they have a very narrow competency, either commercially or technically. The stakes are very high, so there's high expectations with that first investment coming in on making your product market fit, growing your team, but also attracting next generation of investors. And that could all point to a set of advisors that I have competency you don't or can help you open doors and to a formalized board. But what is actually the formula for success in early stage? Is it just getting capital or is it capital and competency? So that's the debate we will have now on is it a waste of time or does it actually help accelerate the startup? In the panel, I would like to introduce Hele Ut from Pre-Seed Ventures, Carlos Espinol from Seed Camp, Ken Willum from Lunaway, and Sida Musa from Superb. And I will just give you one minute each to introduce yourself and give me one statement on board of directors in early stage. Will you start? Ken is not starting. Sida, would you please start? Yes, so uh, my name is Ciro. Uh, I'm from Copenhagen, originally from uh, Jordan, but I'm born and raised here. Um, I'm the CEO of uh, Superb. We're building a guest experience management platform for restaurants. And I think um, the key word for, for, for boards, from my perspective, is power and knowledge. Hmm? Um, my name is Carlos Espinal. I am... Um I'm part of a, the managing team of Seed Camp. We're a 12-year-old now fund based in London that invests all over Europe. Um, we've invested in, in Scandinavian uh, companies as well as Southern European and Eastern European. And what we like to focus on is that super, super early stage. So this is one of those topics that I'm very passionate about. And it's probably going to be hard to, to give you a very succinct statement. But let's just go with uh, the boards are about managing relationships. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, my name is Helle. Uh, I'm an investment director. Okay, good. Okay. Ah, Perfect. All right. Uh, yes, my name is Helle, and uh, I'm an investment director in Pre-Seed Ventures, where we invest in early stage tech startups um, uh, based out of Denmark, with our focus is on Denmark, we've been investing for the last 15 years, uh, um, where we've been a venture partner for the government, uh, and right now we are fundraising for our first private uh, private fund that we will start investing out of from from next year. Um, and I think just the, my one statement would be uh, not so much about pros or cons on boards, but more about that. Uh, I think it's always wise to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you in specific areas uh, that you might not know so much about. Thank you. Ken? Yeah, first of all, this is a really scary experience to have your all in my head. So um, <laughs> um, with that, I'm um, the CEO from Lunaway. Lunaway is a Nordic banking app. So, um, so we have a, a vertical play, with mean, with, which means that we are doing banking just here in the Nordics in a more in-depth solution uh, instead of a, a horizontal play in many territories. I think for us, um, you know, external board members and board members as a whole has been crucial since we started. 
both uh, you know what what you heard from the other guys, but also on uh, creativity and, uh, and hustle. So uh, yeah, so t I'm to the positive side on that. Thank you. So the key words for now are creativity and hustle. From Ken, you said something about competencies you don't have or smarter people, relationships and power. If we stick to the power, could you tell us a little more? What do you mean by power? So I think um, in the process of building a, a startup, uh, going from startup to actually becoming a company, uh, you want to surround yourself with uh, with super intelligent people uh, and people that, like you also said, that can help you as a person and company progress to the next level. Um, I think uh, one important um, one important thing is that when you decide to become a venture case, I think it's also a matter of posi positioning exactly that um, by showing that you're open to actually build a strong board with some intelligent people and people who've done it before that can help you uh, reach a certain position in the future. Um, that makes sense. You said relationships. Yeah, so maybe maybe one thing we can use to uh, discuss the topic further over the course of this particular panel is is what what first of all what is a board because I think th the word can be used literally or it can be used figuratively in the sense that a board can be an aggregation of the people who have backed you mm -hmm. even if it's not from a governance point of view it's the the nature of the conversation that forms when all those people that have a vested interest are together in one room having a conversation about your future so that's one conversation and then the other thing is that that conversation whether it's formalized or informal can fall into one of two ranges of a spectrum. It can either fall into a uh, power one where it's uh, an audit type, uh, authority type structure. On the other end, it's peerage and uh, egalitarian sharing of knowledge. And so in that axis, like that's the next Y axis, you can pretty much plot any board that we've all been on mm -hmm. into which of the spirit of it is on the on this axis and then what is the legal structure of it in this axis and I think we can then maybe have a conversation around which are productive and which are less productive for early stage versus later stage. I love that you already made a model for it um, and yes we can discuss that. Um, I also think that uh, at least my own experience is that as soon as you get investors in they would want to be part of something formalized at least to have a reporting on how are you spending their money? Is it going in the right direction? Are you meeting milestones? How are you expanding the company? At the same time, I would hope that most of the investment you get in early stage does not come just as cash, but carries a bit of brains as well. So I agree on your axis, but maybe it's not so simple that you're either or, uh, but I think it's a good framework to discuss um, Hele, you, um, you sit in a portfolio of a lot of different companies. I don't know how many you've been uh, part of investing in. S what is your experience broadly on how much is it a structure to govern your investment and actually a control facili f facility? And how much is it put in place to actually help accelerate and bring forward knowledge? It's still not working? No, no. it is. Maybe. It's still not working. Anyway, I think, uh, I think it's, uh, it's a mixture for, because, of course, what you mentioned is that when someone invests into a company, they have to have that, uh, that ability or that uh, possibility to, to actually get to know uh, what are they spending the money on, are they meeting the milestones, etc. So there is uh, one part of, uh, of it that is governance. But uh, we always all, we always try also to really incentivize uh, the founders to get external board members as well within their specific area uh, of interest or if within specific areas that their team lack uh, deep knowledge about. So that's uh, that's for sure one thing. But um, but what I also see is that I think it's important just for the fact uh, of, of, of a group of people continuously meeting, discussing the plans and the, how they are moving forward and, uh, and also reflecting on are they actually working on the right things because I do see a lot of startups that, uh, that say, okay, we already have an advisory board um, and that's also really nice and they often have really great names on the advisory board but if it's not formalized, 
then sometimes the everyday life just goes into work instead of actually using those advisors in a structured way where you actually get their, their knowledge into the company. So I think once you organize it as a board, you get that uh, discipline that you actually have to meet and you have to discuss and you also get the continuity because when you give an input or advice or you discuss something on the board you're actually also there to discuss it again the month after and half a year later because sometimes I see advisors going in giving advice but they don't know the context, they don't know the history and they are not even there half a year later when the results of their advice actually uh, kicks in so, so I think that's one of the things that, that I really like about uh, setting up boards early is the continu continuity about it and, uh, and actually being able to uh, to discuss uh, the, 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 the priorities uh, on an ongoing basis and then also reflect on those priorities. Mm. Uh, so it sounds yeah. like a clear pro <laughs> from the investor side I to mean, have some structure. Of course there are also uh, cons if it's not working. Uh, if it's going, We'll get back yeah, to the cons we'll because I think that. you gave a perfect lead way to Ken saying that sometimes you uh, you need specific competency. Your startup is a very in a very regulated industry and I know that you brought uh, quite heavy competence in that specific industry into your board very early as I recall. Can you share a little bit about that? Sure, so um, yeah, right now we're in the lucky position that we actually have two boards. Because ah. we just saw, saw a banking license and on that followed a, a banking board. I have two board of directors and uh, two chairmen, so it's, uh, it's a nightmare. But um, yeah, I think uh, you know we are in a regulated space. We knew early on we needed um, competences in that field. We, we were not from banking. I think that, that's a positive su side about the company. But we kind of uh, needed input on infrastructure, regulation, and so on. And I think also, coming to your point about uh, knowledge and power, um, um, power was uh, our, our chairman is kind of um, experienced in the banking field. So, um, so we also used him as a kind of as a tank to drive into other banks and uh, and, uh, and provide us when we when we needed to do so. So, so he was a huge um, uh, foundation for that. So it's not only the competence, it sounds like it's also the network and the ability to open doors and remove it, blockers. It is, it is, but you know, also we're talking about pre-seed and seed. I think also, you know, in, in that journey, uh, it's not a linear journey, it ch the model changes. Yeah. You're doing a lot of mistakes. You're going back and forth. You're not hitting your targets. So you also need a board that is um, kind of, of ready for that <laughs> and to give you input on that. Good. Carlos, back to your model because you have uh, quite some experience also in working with startups. And it sounded like um, you had an idea at least on your axis where you would say it's most valuable in early stage. So could you elaborate a bit more on that? So the, the reason why I gave that matrix is because there's like an ideal spot. It's just because different different people need different things, for one. And for two, the fact that there is a position in that X, Y axis that exists doesn't necessarily mean that it's good or if, if a company's board is there, that that's constructive. And so I'll give you an example of where, the reason why I said relationships is the key thing is because sometimes um, conversations will happen will happen outside of a board structure which then when the board meeting comes around it's a fait accompli it's done mm -hmm. and and it isn't in the spirit of what a board's supposed to be and that isn't a good thing like that isn't necessarily a good thing but that is the nature of how some boards operate so it's it's more complicated i agree with you. it's more complicated than the next y axis but to answer your question i think earlier on um i, mean, I think generally it's not even earlier on I think generally there has been a migration in the last six years away from like an authoritarian type board structure like as founders are increasingly aware and have access to capital and the best investors nobody wants to be parented you know in, in a board structure so what 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 I think the current generation of investors and, and you know, investors like Precede, you know, that we've we've done several deals together is this more collaborative approach where like the founders leading the board the founders leading the conversation and then taps into the board. So that can happen formally or informally. And so at the at the super, super early stages, sometimes there's a question is, do we need to have this formalized thing? Because if it's going to happen informally, is that good enough? And what's, what's the gain there? And I think that there's some misunderstandings around the comfort that a formalized governance structure can bring because you can get the same amount of comfort um, having frequent conversations that are informal than having uh, every quarter a formal one where everybody's so afraid to say anything that nothing really comes out of it. Mm. So that, that's why it's a lot more fluid, but definitely there's been a, an evolution over the years. 
that makes sense. Just uh, back to Ken before I continue, would you characterize your first board as more formal or informal? I think we actually formalized it from the beginning. Yeah. So, um, so we brought both our, our first investor and also um, uh, an angel investor. Uh, and then we took in some outside uh, assistant also that as an ex external board member. Yeah. I think we kind of structured it and formalized it from day one. Um, but, but I think also from day one we talked about the fact that the board would change over time and that we need to follow on those changes. I'll, I'll give a great example. I have a lot of respect for our first angel investor um, who were you know, around a year and a year and a half into the business. Uh, and he, again, he has a right to a board seat on his investment. Mm. Told us at a board meeting, look, my time has passed. I'm stepping down, bringing in new people to the board so we can take it to the next level. I think that, that was amazing to see an investor that, you know, put the business in front of his yeah. own um, ego. So how many spots are n don't carry equity in the company? I think they, they all of them carry somewhat of equity, right? Okay. But um, yeah, but we so we have the structure today. We have two external board members. Mm -hmm. We brought in a guy called Gary Bremel. Gary used to be the global director for iTunes. Uh, he was also with Microsoft at one point, and today he's the CMO at Supla in the UK. And then we have Tuba, who's from Sweden. She was the uh, director of issuing at Klarna, and after that CTO at Nornet. So we kind of have a like a, a global marketeer. Yeah. And, a, and a fintech expert in infrastructure and technology. And that, that's been, you know, really, really amazing to the business. Sounds good. Sedo, back to you. Your specific experiences, where do you think it has given you most value? Do you have any kind of cases to share or where you thought this is really where I either could have used a formalized board or where I was super happy not to have one? I would, say, I would actually say that uh, Carlos' point about uh, building a collaborative board um, is key to actually having a board that that you can actually be super honest with, right? And and that you can work with as if they were part of your team and not just um, somebody expecting you to only reach results uh, end of quarter. Um, I think uh, the way we run our board from the beginning have set this the the, the standard for um, for how it is when new people join in right so uh, um, a good case of that could be that um, today we have uh, Alexander from pre-seed ventures and Nils from seed capital mm -hmm. and uh, Bjorn Lindberg from uh, former commercial office of Izetl and uh, um, we meet quite often and we talk about everything. It's not only about the numbers. Um, and they can be brutally honest with me and I feel I can be brutally honest with them. So, um, definitely. I would also say to your point about the formal versus informal, that my experience is also that there's a formal structure that works quite well. But I would say in my own experience, a lot of the value adding things actually is the informal uninformal un, un, informal part uh, for example discussing how to build a team how do you recruit what to look for how do you lead i think leadership is often not looked at enough right so as a founder you're often pretty young uh, it's probably your first uh, leadership role it is for many right and all of a sudden you're standing there with a team of five then ten then twenty people and what does that take of you and how do you get that coaching to become a leader? You can get that maybe in a board or somewhere else, but it's a thing we don't talk much about. So maybe just taking that into perspective as well. One is the structured approach to ensure that you meet your milestones and you spend your money wisely and you accelerate your business. But do you also feel that a board could have a value in, in how you actually develop the founder as a leader until you, as long as you need him or yeah, her. Yeah, I mean that. I mean, like if if the if the objective of the panel is to like do all the pros, I mean def no, definitely. No, no, no. We'll get to the cons. We'll get to the cons. I, I mean, promise you. But the thing is that the cons are only how it's implemented, really. Yes. Like they're not cons as such. It's how it's implemented. But like to your point, like um, I'll give you two cases. One of them is a founder who had never really fired anybody, and so like managing how to fire people, and how to promote people so that that there's room for people to get hired in place of the person who's getting fired. That's a key element where they got a lot of advice from, from people who had done it before. 
and in a confident way, right? Like, cause it's hard to go out and ask some random person or a potential new yeah. investor. So it's a, it's like a, a family question, right? And the other one is by having a formal board, um, there was a, a couple of co-founders that they were, they would have been the only directors in the company. So when they got into an argument, there wasn't anybody to help them resolve it. And so by having that third voice, and it was somebody who was very even tempered, was able to then resolve those conflicts. Otherwise, you would have been stuck in a circle um, where it was mutually destructive unless you had another voice there to pacify. Yeah. Kat, just uh, switching to you, uh, do you think your board also, other than opening doors and being the tank who brought you into, uh, drove into banks, do you also think you had the support in developing your team and developing yourself? Yes, I think so. I think um, early on we discussed uh, roles and uh, hierarchy and so on. I think I also caught a bit of a luck that um, I, 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 you know, I, I, I hit it off with our chairman right away. So, so I think that was uh, instrumental for our business the kind of despairing we have had since day number one on the side of the board meetings. So, so, uh, so yeah, definitely. But and I, I think but that's outside of the formal entity problem. No, exactly, and that's also the point. I actually think that we often don't talk enough about, uh, enough about chemistry in a board. So one is having the right competency and being from a certain industry of having experienced something. But if you don't get that chemistry reaction, don't get that informal coaching and sparing that you would get. I think we might be opening up for questions. I'm just looking at uh, someone down here. I think you can post questions and uh, as they pop up, I will ensure to take some of them. Um, let's just take a quick round of cons before we get to questions. So one statement on when is a bad really bad or why shouldn't you do it at all? So um, I don't know if we have really experienced experienced the cons of, of, uh, of our board yet. Um, I think um, like, you know, being brutally honest, I think uh, all VCs or investors have an interest in, in pushing you to build a board uh, fairly quickly and, uh, and um, as a founder, you want to choose the right ones, and you want to choose the ones where you have uh, most chemistry uh, with them, right? Um, and then I think the um, the signs to look for is essentially if you move the needle, right? So um, if you sit and talk about the same things every time, and nothing is happening, then either the team is not performing or you're discussing the wrong goals. That was very elegant in giving us a con and answering the first question. So that's good. Carlos, a uh, con on why should you not do it? So the only negative, really, like I was thinking about that as you asked the question, like what could if I could reduce it down to one thing? The only thing, the only con is some variant of it's a formalized waste of time. Yes. That's it. Like, that's because you can be destructive as a shareholder if if you have an evil shareholder, they can be destructive in an informal or formal capacity. So it's really about the actually formalized Evilness. waste of time. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that's it. But, you know, like hopefully you <laughs> you don't optimize around that. Good. Really? Um Yeah, I agree. Of course, uh, a con is that uh, if, if a board is not implemented uh, in a good way, so if it... If it's a waste of time, of course, uh, you need to do something about it. But it takes some effort to actually uh, build a good relationship with the board. Uh, you just have to sit down and find out how would you actually like to work together and evaluate on that. Um, and um, yeah, I think for hopefully the board and the company has the same goal. I mean, no one wants to waste no one's time because the board will also want uh, the founders to be able to focus on the business. So. So, but but it is uh, it it has it happens sometimes that it is a waste of time, and that's the worst uh, that's the worst uh, the worst cons of uh, of a formalized board. But also to the uh, to the point before, I'd also like to add that I agree really much with what Carla said that different founders need different types of boards. I mean, it's not everything that has to be solved in the board. For example, if you say if you come forward with a challenge with regards to firing people, you've never tried that before then it's the board's responsibility to find someone who can actually spare with you on that challenge. You don't have to be someone in the board exactly, but just to be a place where you can put forward those challenges. Uh, I think that's really important. But, but of course, yeah, con is if, if that's not happening. So it's also about opening new connections, not yeah. necessarily having all the answers. I think so. 
I think, um, mainly I want to echo the talk about a waste of time, but I think it also points back to um, to the founders and to the team itself, or to the company itself. I think, um, you know, we tried on numerous occasions as we built the company in the early days, where we had monthly board meetings to just, you know, hack presentation together the night before the board meeting, didn't share anything in advance, and you were just, you know, blah, 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 metrics, blah, 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 next steps, thanks a lot for flying in. So Give I, me more money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're always talking about that. Yeah. So, uh, so I think on that, it, it also you know, fires back to ourselves. So it's maybe also the waste of time still makes you stick to the point of actually looking at the metrics and yeah, tracking but, your progress. But I think it's difficult because in, in, you know, actually today in our, in our board meetings today, we have taken out all KPIs from the board meetings. So we, okay. do a, we do a call days before the board meeting. So board meetings are only about strategy instead of you know KPIs da, 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 da. can I but clarify that, that the, the waste of time comes not necessarily from like any specific topic it comes from somebody on the board having their ego draw that topic out longer than it needs to that makes sense but I think maybe there was a hidden advice also in your um, in your last answer saying that maybe the board meeting should also be about what is it actually about so what is the board forum for you say it's for strategy and all the KPIs you actually send out prior hand and discuss them. That could at least be ad an advice to and take and with and you. And again, since it's not linear in, in, in a, in a pre-seed or seed stage, and you're meeting once a month, sometimes you have a massive agenda, and sometimes you have barely anything to talk about. But you still have the board meeting, right? True. We'll take some of the questions now, pop more up. Uh, we have two minutes left. We'll do it really fast. We'll start with the, the latter one. How do you approach busy angels about joining your board? Should I even form a board? now if they're already advising informally. So let's start with the first one. How do you get people interested? How do you even approach them? I guess it's a founder asking in the audience. Any good advice from some of the startups or from Hille? Uh, <laughs> actually, I think uh, we have at least what, what I know of is that people really want to help. I mean, there are so many really great competencies out there that really wants to help startups. So if you approach someone and it's within their interest, uh, area of interest and they also are uh, incentivized with regards to being a, an angel investor, I mean, uh, hopefully they would want to help. I mean, we, we see a lot of people who really want to, want to help uh, startups in their boards if they have any competences that can actually... But maybe that's also a fair them. point to the one who asked the questions in the audience that maybe if you have a pre-seed or a seed investor, have them help you find board members of because course. that's also what you do. That's also what we do. Yeah, we always do a gap analysis uh, where we, with the team where we say, okay, what gaps do, does this team have? What do, what do they really need, uh, need uh, yeah. external input on? Yeah, and then we help them find that uh, competences. We have one minute left, so we'll not do the questions, but you can get one advice to either the founders or the investors in the audi audience. So one final advice. Um, On topic or off topic, yeah, I can, I we'll can do it broadly. I can just add it to that. So, I mean, you decided to become a founder. I guess that's because you dream of building something amazing. And um, that dream is what you should use to convince people to, uh, to join your board. I think uh, just like you're approaching investors, approach the people you want to join your board and help you uh, during that path. Carlos? I think sometimes it can feel like a board is something that's put on you. Uh, but maybe I'd encourage you to think yeah. about it as the way you think about hiring employees. You think about hiring employees as a function that they're going to play in what you need. Think about your board as what do you need and go and look for that. Yeah, exactly. I agree, uh, agree with that. And uh, make sure that your board is someone who gives you energy and doesn't drain your energy. It has to be someone you feel that supports you in that dream and that is on the same uh, target as you are yourself. Thank you. And then uh, take your time, like, you know, spend, um, do lunch, lunch meetings with potential board members, bring them in as a guest or as an observer before you lock down the deal so you're not, you know, doing anything wrong. That's also very good advice. And with that, I think even though they can't hear us, should we give them a round of applause for the good advice? We can hear you. Nice. Thank you so much. <laughs>